Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist, and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options. And at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Stove Leg Media, igniting conversation. Hi guys, happy Friday and welcome to I've Been Thinking. This week, we are going to talk about something that is a near and dear concept to my heart, and that is empowerment through clothing. I've hinted at it a little bit here and there on the pod or on the Instagram this week, um, where I've shared things like a woman does not have to be modest in order to be respected. And that is just such a critical line to this, I think. But anyway, I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, and I don't think that there's really much business to attend to at the moment. I have not yet totally decided on August Book Club. So, as soon as I decide on that, I will let you know. Um, and I've also asked recently in my stories on the podcast Instagram um, for some suggestions. I'm trying really hard to get ahead to work on the coming months. So, if you have any suggestions for like spooky stories, um, creepy things from your hometown or something like that, things that you've experienced yourself, creepy books, you know, any of those things, I would really love for you to send me recommendations for that because go ahead and get excited for the month of October. It is all going to be creepy themed, all of it. So I'm super excited for that. I really enjoy Halloween. I really enjoy ghost stories and the paranormal and aliens and all that stuff. So go ahead and send me your experiences, your stories, everything. Even if it's like the time you almost got kidnapped, that's good too. Because, you know, well, that's bad, but that's a good story. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and jump in, I guess. Like I said, this week we're talking about clothing. Clothing and why it is empowering. So, clothing is an essential part, weirdly enough, of what makes us human. And I say it's weird because it's not something that, you know, we're born with <laughs> and it's not something that we rely on to survive, like food, water, etc. But it is essential to humanity, I think, because we are the only species on Earth who wears clothing, you know. 
It's not like gorillas are walking around in bikinis or birds for that matter. Um, so it is very, it's a very human thing, but it is also an essential connection to our cultures within humanity and to our identity even within that. Clothing itself fulfills critical human needs. It does. It fulfills emotional needs, um, the need for communication and self-expression, comfort, protection, you know, protects us from the sun, um, allows us to entertain ourselves and have a sense of variety, create beauty, to... It, it's a creator of belonging and connection. And then it's also a marker of significance. So think about how clothing is necessary to cover and protect us from the sun or to keep us warm. It provides a way for us to bond with each other. So people and communities are able to dress in similar ways as a form of connecting. Um, and, you know, wedding dresses, funeral attire... Other ceremonial garb for rituals, whatever. Those are all markers of significance and ways to communicate emotions. And this is relevant, if you think about it, for literally any culture. From indigenous peoples to African tribes to... Europeans, you know, to to ancient Europeans who wore skins or, you know, in ways that American indigenous people wore skins, they wore them as symbols of the hunt or ritualistically. A clothing style and the way you wear it, all of those things, they are intrinsic to individual cultures, and that's a very important thing to go ahead and acknowledge. Clothing is an act, though. My painting professor in college, he always said painting is a verb in that, you know, you do it. In that same sense, wearing is a verb. You are doing it. You are wearing something. You are making specific choices. It's a form of expression to show off your creativity, and it's a way to manifest who you're going to be today. I actually read through a compilation of nine different women who had been interviewed and were talking about how clothing empowers them. And the most common idea throughout all nine of these women's little blurbs was that Loving what you wear and feeling good about what you're wearing contributes to your confidence. So clothing is an essential player, I guess, in our development of our sense of self and of our confidence. And it's essential in us portraying who we are to the world. Which is very important, especially in times when that can seem to get lost. I think about how cookie cutter in so many ways, for example, the 1950s was. So, you know, if you were doing anything different in the 50s, you were noticed for good or for better. (laughs) For good or for better. For good or for worse, you were noticed and... You know, that might not have been, it might not have been considered a good thing by the masses, always, but your uniqueness was yours. You know, you were making a statement, you were saying, this is who I am, and I don't have to to fit in with everybody else in order to be confident with who I am, right? That was a little convoluted, but I hope you got what I was going for there. Um, so, in the same 
vein as what I was discussing previously with the nine women. I did a little poll on Instagram and I found from the people who responded to me that most every woman who responded just loves to have fun with their clothes and use it as an expression of their creativity and use it to define for themselves and for the world who they want to be that day. So, for example, one of my friends, Katie, said that for her, Katie in joggers and a crop top and sneakers is very different than Katie in a red fur coat and, you know, done up in high heels. And those are both Katie, but they're two different expressions of who she is. You know, they're two versions of who she is and her personality. And they're both beautiful and she loves them both. But they're just two different ways for her to identify who she is that day, you know, kind of what she's here for. Is she here to lounge around or is she here to party? You know, or is she here to just absolutely stun? You know, whatever. But that's a way of her deciding who she gets to be. In case you need a little bit more proof of that, in an article that I found referencing a new project on exhibit at Cornell University, Denise Green, a faculty member in the College of Human Ecology at Cornell, said that clothing is, she said, quote, clothing is actually a really critical site of cultural production. It's where we convey who we are, where we come from, and what we want the world to be. And so we are always being and becoming in our clothes and presenting ourselves to the world. What an eloquent way to sum up really everything I've just said. It's a source of culture. It is a product of culture at the same time. Clothing is a source of who we are, but it's also defining in certain ways. It's a really interesting dichotomy, you know, and a really interesting duality more so than a dichotomy. Um, it is, it has actually really fascinated me. And all of this comes down to, you know, this is an argument I've had so many times, but it comes down to girls like to wear what we like to wear. That really goes for everybody. You like to wear what you like to wear. If you want to wear shorts and t-shirts all the time, great, more power to you. If you like to wear a dress all the time, more power to you. You know, but the thing that's important to recognize is that more often than not, and I think that this is more prevalent today than perhaps it has been in the past, but and that could be because of the surge in use of social media and, you know, all of those things where we're kind of on display more often than we used to be. But we wear what we wear for ourselves, hopefully. <laughs> if we were dressing for men, we'd just be naked, you know? I personally dress for myself. My roommates, I know, they dress for themselves. We dress to express ourselves and to feel good. But we also do dress for each other, for other girls, to gain an understanding of us, to connect with other girls. You know, there's a certain, there's certain types of people who are attracted to other types of people platonically or otherwise based on what they're wearing. You know, lily girls and other lily girls, um, hippie girls and other hippie girls, you know, it, and that's fine. It's just, you see a person and what they're wearing and you think to yourself, oh, that could be the kind of person that I could be friends with based on what they're wearing. Doesn't always work out and that's fine too. You know, sometimes the clothing 
doesn't match what you expected that person to be, but whatever. It just gives you a sense of who that person is and that allows you to make a bit of a judgment call of, okay, that's the kind of person I could jive with maybe. (laughs) You know, if we want to wear a crop top and booty shorts, who freaking cares? Who cares? If that's what makes you feel good, then ultimately that's what matters. Good for you. Good for us. If we want to be completely covered, then that's fine too. I'm very passionate about this at the moment. That is fine too. If that's what makes you comfortable, that's all that matters. All that matters is that we are comfortable and we are confident and we're dressing to please ourselves and not others. That's it. So, this bit of a rant leads me to this question. Why do so many men, I'm not at all saying that all men think of this this way, but I have heard from some who do, and it's confusing for them because they're like, why do men think that clothing is a traffic light? Some men. You know, I've heard from some guys who say, well, she was wearing a crop top and that means that she wants attention. So I went up and talked to her, but she didn't want to talk to me. And that's really confusing to me. That's not how that works. That is literally not how that works. What? I don't get what's so hard about that. You know, that's a really slippery slope into the whole she was wearing that she asked for it. And that is not even a topic for today. That is, mm -mm, I'm not going into that today because that is a whole nother rabbit hole that you don't want to hear me get on. Whole nother soapbox you don't want to hear me get on today. But, you know, guys see a girl wearing something and they think she wants attention because of that. And... In reality, she just likes what she's wearing. She likes how it looks on her. She likes it. Whatever. Same for guys. He is not wearing a shirt that's cut out at the arms so that you can stare at him. He is wearing that because it's easier to lift in at the gym or it's cooler while he's walking the dog. Whatever. Adam wears these two stupid shirts that I hate that are like that. And I don't hate them because they're cut out and you can see his whole entire chest because that's pretty much all that's left of it. I hate it because they're old and raggedy. But I'm like, you know, he doesn't wear that so that he can get looks. He wears it because it's comfy and it's like his favorite thing to put on. Who am I to deny him of that, you know? In the same way... Who is anybody to deny me or my sisters or anybody else of wearing a freaking crop top? You know, oh, it just brings me out. So, this then leads me to... Why do shorts or tank tops or whatever, something that is revealing, have some inherent contribution to a woman's worth or lack thereof? I would have to guess that part of it at least definitely goes back to school dress codes and girls being told to cover up so as not to distract the boys which clearly teaches children from a very early age that a woman must be modest in order to be respected and that boys are not in control of their own minds and actions. So we have to do that for them. And that is just not helpful to anybody. It's not helpful for boys because it's not teaching them to be responsible and to be focused on something other than lust, I guess. Um... And it's teaching girls that their worth is somehow related to what they wear. And it's teaching girls that 
we're going to disturb your school day because you're wearing a tank top because that boy over there can't be distracted. So we're going to disrupt your day so that that boy over there can focus. How, where, what, where is that fair? Where does that come from? And I want to go ahead and address this. Don't even start on me some bullcrap about modesty being biblical because to an extent it is. But I love Jesus. So I know that he told his disciples when they were like, oh my gosh, Jesus, what do we do when we see women and they're so attractive and we can't control ourselves and we want to touch them so bad. Jesus told them to chop off their hands so they couldn't do that. So tell me where Jesus says that my worth is based on my clothing. Jesus would not judge me based on my clothing. His best friend was a former prostitute. So tell me where Jesus would judge me. A former female prostitute. Tell me where Jesus would judge me, a woman who sins just like anybody else, based off my clothing. He does not ever say that modesty is a requisite for intrinsic worth. So the fact that that is any kind of argument is just ridiculous to me. Further, I found a study as I was researching all of this, these ideas of empowerment through clothing, of finding worth and value in clothing, all of that. I found a study where researchers tested male perceptions of women's humanity depending on the amount of clothing they were wearing. Now, I don't want you to think that this is some man-hating episode. It is not. But I do think that there are systems in place that encourage these kinds of perceptions. So, literally, I kid you not, When presented with women wearing less clothing, the males in the study perceive them as essentially a different kind of human than a man. The less clothing they wore, the more likely males were to see these women as feeling beings only rather than thinking beings. And the researchers are the ones who frame this as these being too different independent kinds of humans that was not a me exaggerating situation the researchers wrote it as these men perceived these women as entirely different kinds of humans than their own selves and that's just mind-blowing to me that a man or anybody can see somebody I mean freaking Old women, they're mean sometimes. Even young women are mean sometimes. It's not just men, y'all. It's everybody. Everybody's judgy. Everybody does this stuff. Where they look at a girl with less clothing on than they themselves are wearing. And they judge her based on that. And that is ridiculous. I saw this horrible old woman last week in a restaurant that Taylor and I went to very safely. We were social distancing. We had our masks with us. We had our hand sanitizer. Very careful. But in this restaurant, in the part that we we were on the patio and the waiters and waitresses on the patio wear shorts and t-shirts. Like very polished, but they wear shorts and t-shirts. And Our server, in particular, she was the cutest thing, and she had on a pair of shorts. She walks by this horrible woman who was, like, standing next to a table across from us, and I saw this woman give her the meanest up and down I have seen in a long time. And (laughs) me being me, I just stared at her as she did it, 
and then she looked up and made eye contact with me, still making this horrible, disgusted face. And when she saw that I was just staring blankly at her, she looked like a tiny bit ashamed of herself and like looked away. But still, she's, that is this girl's uniform. That's what every dang person in that restaurant wears. And she gave her the up down because she had her thighs out, I guess. I don't know. But that is just ridiculous. Why, (laughs) why do we consider modesty necessary to respect a woman or anybody? Why? Why, 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 Clothing is a way for humans to express themselves, to empower themselves, to be their best. And, you know, I think that historically it has been especially important to women because women have been, not always, but in many ways, women have been kind of held back from expressing themselves in other ways. Women haven't been educated the same way that men have historically. Women haven't been allowed a lot of the same freedoms and rights. So it has always been and is within female culture a really important way for women to feel good about themselves, to be confident, to be joyful, to create things and to express themselves in one of the few ways that they can. And you know, you know how I feel about being happy. It's pretty much the most important thing in life to me. So why do people, anybody, young, old, male, female, neither, why do they want to use clothing as an excuse to judge somebody, to judge their character and their worth? Why do they want to use that as an excuse to discriminate, as an excuse to treat someone as less than? I, you know, I understand that some clothes are more appropriate for certain situations than others. Don't get me wrong there. I'm not saying that I have any problem with that. You know, I don't necessarily want, like, to wear a sports bra or have my butt hanging out at a corporate meeting. That's that's, you know, two different situations. That's situational awareness that's important there. But the idea that anything a person wears is grounds for deciding their value as a human is just inconceivable to me. You know, if I'm going to the park or to class or to the gym or to the grocery or to a restaurant and I wear a crop top, who cares? That should not be perceived as me saying, look at me, give me attention. That should be just as normal as socks with sandals. Maybe it's not for you, but if that person over there wants to do it, then more power to them. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's episode. I definitely um rambled maybe a little bit more than usual, but I had a lot of fun doing this. And if you can't tell, I am passionate about this whole situation. Follow us on Instagram. Leave your thoughts on this week's episode on today's Instagram post if you want. Um, I would really enjoy that or DM me or something. I love hearing from you guys and I love talking about our episodes a little bit more candidly and with you all. Leave us a review on Apple if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. It's really important and it is really helpful to me. And make sure you tell your friends and family just this week, tell one person. If each of you told one person this week, obviously that would double you know, listenership, but that would just be so helpful and so kind of you for you to help me and support me in that way. Again, um, Instagram is at I've been thinking pod. Please check us out there. Give us a message or send us an email at I've been thinking pod at gmail.com. 
And yeah, I just, I really hope you all enjoyed this week's episode. I think you'll like next week's episode as well. Uh, But I'm keeping that one a secret too. You all have a great weekend and a great week. Thanks, guys. I'll talk at you later. Bye. Hello, you sentient ball of stardust. My name is Casey Davis. I'm a therapist and I'm an author of the book, How to Keep House While Drowning, where I talk about ways to make it a little bit easier to take care of yourself when you're overwhelmed, stressed, have mental health issues, physical health issues, or maybe you're just in a hard season of life. Maybe you're looking for a place that you can come and listen to some practical advice. This is a podcast for all of the self-help rejects. We're going to talk about skills for survival and self-kindness. And I'm going to leave the pop psychology at the door. I promise not to tell you to meditate or to journal. We're just going to give you some really insightful conversations with hopefully some practical advice. So I don't believe you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps. I don't want you to just try harder. And I don't believe that laziness exists. So join me over on Struggle Care, where we can find compassionate solutions that help us function a little bit better. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options. And at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group.